Welcome back everyone for another update on number six blast furnace reline. Today we're in the gas cleaning system. I'm here today with Luke Mayer and Daniel Fusco, our lead engineers for the new top recovery turbine that we're going to install. Fellas, can I get you to tell us a bit about the new top recovery turbine, what it does and what it means for the future operation of number six blast furnace? So what we're doing this campaign is we're incorporating the turbine to generate um, some power from the off gas that comes off the blast furnace. There's two primary functions. So one is the power generation component. The other is that we utilise the turbine to actually control pressure within the blast furnace itself. So there's a lot of equipment that's got to go in here to facilitate the installation of a TRT. There's a lot of peripheral systems, hydraulic systems, large vessels, a large amount of ductwork that's got to be installed. And um, it's going to be quite a challenge, but we're looking forward to it. So the turbine will be coupled with a 14 megawatt alternator. And like Luke said, that alternator will use the pressure from the top gas to generate electricity. On average, it'll be generating about 12 megawatts of electricity most of the time. From here on in, we're finishing off the, um, the design work associated with the TRT. We're looking at executing a lot of our long lead heavy fabrication projects at the moment. Just to put things in perspective, we've got about 60 odd piles that are gonna go in the TRT space, about 720 cubic meters of concrete. So that's about 160 odd trucks of concrete. So it's a hell of a lot of work that we've got to do um, over the course of the next six months. And then upwards of about 200 tonnes of steel work that we've got to install. So it's an important part for, of the project. It's a big part of the project. But we plan on delivering on that and it's going to be exciting to see next year. Nailed it. OK, we're still here in the gas system. Um, another major scope of work that we have in the gas system is the uh, reconfiguration of the dust catcher. I'm here with the lead engineer, Travis Dalla, and the construction coordinator, Cameron Steele, who are going to talk us through this scope of work. Um, guys, can you tell us about the work that we've got going on on the dust catcher? So the dust catcher is a large pressure vessel. It's used to take the uh, dirty gas off the top of the furnace. We extract about 70 tonnes of dust every day. The major task on this vessel is the work to install a lock off system, which is a system to isolate the, uh, the blast furnace gas from the dust that we're extracting during operations. So this is a major safety and environmental improvement on the original design. So there was a lot of work involved around the engineering of that system, but then also how we modify the dust catcher itself to allow for the installation of that. Yeah, so Cameron, can you uh, talk us through how this uh, construction effort is uh, been undertaken? So part of the construction activities for the dust catcher, we'll be implementing a series of splice plates down at ground level. Um, as a part of that, there'll be a complex jacking arrangement. We'll jack this whole 400 ton structure, 1.5 metres in the air, and implementing, implementing a new segment arrangement. Okay, so we're still in the gas cleaning plant today. Um, I'm here with Ibrahim Ramal and Naraj Lal. Uh, Ibrahim is our process engineer and Naraj is our mechanical engineer for the effluent treatment plant. Fellas, can you tell us about the scope of work for the effluent treatment plant on the Reline project? So the effluent treatment plant is a crucial part of the blast furnace process. It's, a, it's used to recirculate water within the gas cleaning area. So basically we have an aeration tank, clarifier and cooling tower. So these unit operations are very important to allow for clean, reusable water within the process. Naraj, can you tell us about the challenges within the process? I certainly can, Ev. So some of the challenges that we have facing us for this power fire rebuild, uh, first of all, we need to remove the structures that exist behind us. Um, so that involves the aeration tanks, the clarifier basin, and some of our cooling tower. And then we're gonna be building a brand new above ground clarifier, which allows us in our future campaign to get access underneath, carry out inspections, and access all of the equipment that helps feed water into our cooling system, which then gets recirculated back into the furnace. Awesome.